And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Bant midrange. That's right, we are uh, going a different three color combination with Oko here for midrange deck. We're going Bant because I really like Cavalier of Dawn right now. Uh, we were talking about this before we played a, a Cavalier of Dawn deck um, three days ago. And this card, you know, it can destroy anything and turn it into a 3-3. And whenever you have Oko that's making a lot of 3-3s, Nissa that's making a lot of 3-3s in the metagame, 3-3s aren't super valuable. And so it's just, it's, you know, basically Vindicate, you know, destroy it. Well, Vindicate destroys lands, but, you know, uh, destroy any non-land permanent, you know, like, do they got Artifact, Enchantment, Planeswalkers, you know, turning Planeswalkers into 3-3s, especially turning Oko into a 3-3 is very satisfying and so that's what our deck is kind of built around here at the cavalier of dawns um so we're trying to take full advantage of cavalier of dawn uh <clears throat> another thing that that's works really well with it of course if you make a three three well you can also just bounce the three three with teferi so even though you make a three three you just boom bounce it with teferi now it's gone and now you just have a four six and their permanent is gone for good you can of course fight with wicked wolf with it also um and everything so besides that you know like we're we're playing uh some regular band cards we got risen reefs to go along with the cavalier of dawn so like our our three drop slot is just loaded here between risen reef to fairy and oko we got a loaded three drop slot also got one deputy because if we make a whole bunch of three threes with cavaliers we can also clean them up with deputy there uh charming prince can flicker our cavaliers or flicker risen reefs or wicked wolves or of course agent of treacheries um, as well, and it also just helps us scry set up um, our our draws. So hopefully we can have an impactful three drop every game. Um, also, also going with a Teferi Time Twist as just kind of like a a spell that you know it's basically like a, a dive down kind of thing. But then when all of our creatures have these ETB effects, it could be really powerful. Also, Teferi Time. I think like I just think this card's kind of underrated. Like this card exiles like any permanent you control so like even the planeswalkers you know like we we play teferi we bounce something they try to attack and kill teferi and then in combat we just flicker the teferi and then the next turn we get to bounce something else and draw another card or you know like you know how much loyalty oko is and how difficult it is to kill oko in combat if our opponent finally you know it has like lethal on oko and gets to you know attack for you know six damage or whatever on oko we flicker it have it leave have it come back and it's just so devastating um let's see what else i got a spark double in here because as we've seen like oko into spark double is super powerful but even just risen reef into spark double to fairy into spark double is not bad um and everything and of course you know like we could to fairy time twist like an agent of treachery at the top end yeah, this is a, a pretty good value deck. Let's see how this works. I'm not sh exactly sure how the mana is going to work, and I kind of wanted to play Once Upon a Times, but I also wanted to play all these cards, and so it's hard to fit in Once Upon a Times with all these sweet cards. Um, so I didn't fit them in. Um, it looks like looks like I got I got four Ashiox in my sideboard. I guess that's my plan against control. I suppose is mill them out because this is a very slow deck. So I guess I guess that's the plan there. <laughs> I built this deck like four or five days ago. Um, I guess that that was my thinking there. And then, you know, like Tulsimer is good against aggro. So we got an extra one of those in, some more deputies for, for aggro and, and everything. And, um, you know, a time wipe if we want that one, if they're playing like Nissa and stuff. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. That is a lot of Ashiox. I guess maybe because like Esper, Esper Dance was like making a comeback. And I thought the Esper Dance matchup would be tough. And I want a bunch of those, I guess. Yeah, there, there's just not there's not that many great artifacts and enchantments for the Cavalier of Dawn Death Trigger. Like, Doom Foretold is amazing, and, you know, you have, like, the eggs and stuff. But I, I feel like just, you know, like, this isn't, you know, Doom Foretold, of course, you have to play white-black. But then even, like, the eggs and everything. I think I'd rather just play the other cards and not really worry about that trigger too much. Hey, Lenziller. Okay. 
I guess we keep turn two Oko. Even though it's basically a six card hand with this agent of treachery. All right, well, Spark Double is amazing. We need to draw a land here, but if we have turn two Oko, turn three second Oko, we're probably winning the game. Not guaranteed. But probably. Okay, maybe not. Edgewall Innkeeper also busted. Who's more foolish? The fool. Or the fool. So I could have turned the Innkeeper into a 3-3. Three, three. That's fine. Ow, ow. So hostile to the truth. Sweet. Hmm. Maybe it's better to Wicked Wolf, this innkeeper. Ugh, I really want a spark double though. I guess that's better though. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. So I could I could make a a food and then I'd be able to just like block and sack the food. But that's that's the card I was worried about. It was like if I just make a food questing beast is a huge problem because that comes down to be able to kill this Oko. Because then I couldn't. Well, I guess I guess if I would have made a, a food, I would have had six loyalty. So I blocked the Love Struck Beast. Ah, uh, okay. So I should have should have made a food. Oh well. <clears throat> Quite the nibble. Hmm. Oh, I, I love Stone Coral Serpent. I play it all the time. Yeah, Stone Coral Serpent's awesome. But I guess if you're just talking about, like, in these decks, like, why aren't people playing Stone Coral Serpent? Um, it's not... It doesn't... It doesn't match up perfectly against Oko, with Oko just making green 3-3s three to get in its way. Surely you must be famished. I will invert the world to watch kings grovel and worms rule. Let's broaden your existence. Ugh. Well, I guess both my Okos are dead now. Pretty good curve. In Innkeeper, the Knight, then uh, Beast Beast Rankle. Pretty good curve. We're not dead yet.
They're... They definitely should kill the Gilded Goose there and keep the Harpooner around because the Harpooner is going to trade with that thing anyway. Now I just have the Goose that can help me gain life. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. They didn't kill my agent of treachery. They killed the Charming Prince instead. Come on. <laughs> well, that... That's pretty good. They don't play Swordmaster. Hey, Ms. Me. Thanks for the sub. Got a new sub here. 24th sub of the day. That's unfortunate. It's also unfortunate. Yeah. Double edge wall. Double innkeeper. Double edge wall innkeeper is. Pretty difficult. They just don't want to kill my agent at treachery. Yeah, Chain Whirler would be really nice right now. Yeah, they, they definitely need to kill that goose. Like that. They, if they would have just killed the goose, and and if they would have just killed my agent of treachery right away, but sorry, they're, they're they're drawn well enough that they're gonna be able to make up for it just fine. Yeah, I have a time wipe in the sideboard. Yep. So yeah, we'll bring in that time wipe. Um, love Vale of Summer in this matchup. Tulsmer can do some good fighting. Oh yeah. I forgot, our whole point of our deck is to play four Cavalier of Dawn. We didn't see any of those. Almost forgot. I don't really like Deputy in the matchup too much. We'll take out Deputy, and honestly, maybe maybe just take out Risen Reefs. It could be a little slow, but you know now I have like all these five drops though. Maybe Teferi's. I guess I don't really want to bounce their cards like at all. 
Yeah, actually, I just don't really want to bounce their cards. And then we'll take out the double. All right, let's give this a try. Yeah, especially if we're, if we're cutting to fairies, should probably yeah, then 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 we can't really afford the the spark double at that point. Oh yeah, Ral minus two into casualties of war. That is that is some pretty big game right there. All right, so we need our land drops. <clears throat> we'll be able to use this Charming Prince here to look for land drops. Let's cry two. Sure. This kind of feels like it's just going to be one of those games where my opponent has a really good card basically all all of the time. See, because we're playing all these Cavaliers, I kind of want to keep this white Mana Source. But we could also just get rid of both of these and look for more powerful cards. Those having four lands. Look for basically kind of looking for like Risen Reef, Oko. Stream Decker is not updated. Thank you. It's not that Charming Prince is really that great. It's just trading, you know, getting rid of their Murderous Rider and Drawing a card for one mana is just such a good play. Alright, decklist command and everything should be updated now. Yeah, hard to turn down one mana card to command. Basically, Questing Beast just hit so hard 
that I don't want to I don't think it's it's a very good plan to sit back and wait for them to put a whole bunch of stuff onto the battlefield with questing beast because it hits so hard. Maybe I shouldn't have put the wolf down at the bottom. Alright, well, it looks like it's time for a time wipe. I would like to draw my edge wall innkeeper. I've been digging pretty hard for it also. With all these cries. I mean, it's possible Veil vale Summer just does absolutely nothing. Uh, I, I don't really know exactly what the new Elspeth does. I haven't really looked at the card too much yet. Yeah, that over here the the records and everything. We went three and one with the Demir deck. The one mana 1-1 one, one is just so incredibly threatening. <laughs> Much more threatening than the 3-2 or the 2-3. Of course, with the time twist, it doesn't come back till end step, so... Can't do anything to save myself there. All right, got out grinded. I think that'll happen if we have no no risen reef, no oko, nothing like that. Edge wall innkeeper is difficult to out grind when when you when you don't have your grind cards. <clears throat> okay, so let's go grab a planes with this fable passage. I'm kind of thinking they have like Bone Crusher Giants here. That's my pick, at least. Let's go. Let's go. Time Raveler. Okay, it's Quench. That's fine. I 
I'd like to be able to have Risen Reef and then Time Twist to protect Risen Reef. Ideally. Yeah, Jeskai Fires is a real deck. It's not like one of the best things, but it's a real deck. Is yeah, it exiles any any permanent you control, so you can exile planeswalkers you control if they're about to die or anything else. Yeah, there's some good stuff in black white control. So they didn't have any lands in hand. This is going exactly how my opponent wants it to go. So, like, they likely have counter magic here. I'm glad we got the four Veil of Summers in the sideboard. Um, ooh, are they gonna let? They're gonna let me have this. Wicked Wolf is going to be problematic for my opponent. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, Garrick's definitely good. Yep, like I said a turn before, this is going exactly how my opponent wants it to go. I think we can say that's continued on, and that's still fair to say.
It'd be a great time to draw one of those Teferis. I'm going to be boarding out Agent Treachery. It's not so good in this matchup with them playing four Brazen Borrowers. That, when they don't have like great things to steal, unless it's like Niv, but then they also just have all the Brazen Borrowers that get to rebound stuff. So that's not great either. I don't want to try to Wicked Wolf fight Niv Mizzet, even though that's the highest upside because of, again, with Brazen Borrower, I don't want to risk it. But I guess that would be them not bouncing Wilderness Reclamation. It's just so much food to sacrifice with Wicked Wolf. That can be devastating. Pretty surprised they dealt two damage to me instead of just killing Goose or Prince or, you know, like killing something else. It's possible something gets banned. It's it's the 18th of November is the next BNR announcement. Two weeks from tomorrow. That's certainly possible. Sorry about bumping the mic there. Didn't they didn't have a land to go get? I guess Are they out of basics. I guess they were out. <laughs> Bump in the mic. Make chat lose three life. <laughs>
It's like I kind of have to attack. Like, I need to be attacking, but I don't have any good attacks. Like, I could attack out with everything. They could eat eat two, like eat both of these, or I could let them double block and kill my Cavalier. I don't, I don't want to trade a 4-6 for a 4-3. Anyway, Photon, thank you so much for the resub. I appreciate that, Photon. You are amazing. That gets us to 25 on the day. Yep. Good. Make sure I didn't miss any. Yeah, it's possible that our deck could use a Great Henge. We haven't done a very good job of drawing our our 12 3 drops that are like super impactful. The 4 Teferi, the 4 Risen Reef, the 4 Oko. Like just in any of these games, we're not drawing them very much at all. Huh. So they don't want to bounce their Wilderness Reclamation? It is non-land permanent, right? Yeah. You know, we've had a lot of scries, you know, like imagine we've already we've scried two lands and a paradise druid down to the bottom, you know, with all this, like we've been scrying a whole lot of stuff. We just keep drawing lands. <laughs> Need to quit making 30 land decks. Uh, this deck does have a, a good amount of lands. I do have 26 lands in this deck. That is a lot of lands. But we need to hit our land drops and everything. You know, our, de our decks definitely belt around these three, these three three drops, and like we've never had a game where we've drawn more than like two of them. Like I think we drew two that that game, and that was like the most that we've drawn out of, of these twelve cards. 
so far, even with all the scrying with Charming Prince looking for these and everything. I guess Knight of Autumn is just pretty cool with Cavalier of Dawn anyway. Turn something into a 3-3 three, three and then blow it up. All right, I need to take out one more card. We need to take out one more card. Okay. I'll display one Night of Autumn. Have I redone Dredge yet this cycle? So since this set came out, I've I've only played Dredge one time. It was it was a donation deck, so it was you know built by somebody else. Um, and you know it went okay. It went okay. I've I've seen a lot of other people start picking the deck up, though, with the addition of, especially with the O four. The O four. They lets you cast two blue spells and you know mill four. Um, that card's really strong. So we're gonna try for the turn two Oko, but we have to draw an untapped land. I mean, I just I can't really afford Oko getting mystical disputed, but it also doesn't get better for me. Why does the opponent have to have everything? <laughs> Why do they have to have the perfect answer every time? Uh, this deck so far, all, all four, all four games, our opponents had like, whatever, whatever is the best thing for them to have, they've had, and it's very rough. I don't know. I I was kind of planning on playing Cavalier of Dawn and destroying the Goose and making a 4-6 and a 3-3. Three, three. I don't know. I, I kind of don't really like that plan anymore. So I, I wish I would have just played the Tranquil Cove, of course. Castle's pretty cool. Yeah, 
Yeah, now I can nuke. Yes, now I, I could destroy a food. Um, at the time, last turn, if I would have played Cavalier of Dawn, I would have had to use my food, and so I would not have had any food. But that was the thing about like waiting, is now I have food to destroy and turn into a 3-3. Three, three. I didn't last, last turn. I want to be able to, like, you know, pay for Mystical Dispute or Quench or anything like that. I know I could have made a food first and then done that. But now the Goose is a 1-3, and, like, a 1-3 is a lot more difficult for my opponent to deal with. I basically want Mystical Dispute. I mean, it's not even that, that great to play either of these cards. I basically want Mystical Dispute and Quench to kind of be dead cards. Don't really want to play anything into either of them. We'll just kind of start making an army of 1 1s. The goose is back. But now the goose is an O2. Doesn't trade with borrower anymore. They're pretty far away from playing Niv Mizza with just having one red source, so I don't have to be super worried about Niv Mizza. Get that brazen borrower out of here. Now we got seven power.
All right, we're finally doing stuff. It does seem like the, the 26 lands maybe is too many because just all of these games, are we just have so much land and not so much spells. Yeah, Krasis could be good in this deck. Just having all this mana. So I hope they have Quench or Mystical Dispute. Because obviously we have plenty of mana for those. Darn. They have actual negate. So yeah, I can gain four life with Knight of Autumn. But that that's only that's only technically one life, because I can just gain so it's like I can play this to gain one life. I don't think that's really worth it. I'll just keep this food cracking up. Because like if I do that I can only crack one food to play with Knight of Autumn, so it's one life. Well, that's like the worst case scenario. Play Wilderness Reclamation, gain three mana this turn, plus gain tons of mana every other turn after this. Wow, they're down to 1150. This is just game two. It's like explosion, they can only do six damage. Ugh. So explosion doesn't kill us. So they're going to go with Explosion for four, and then try to draw a burn spell, but that's only drawing an extra two. Yep. How effective would like a mill plan with Ashiok be? Ugh. 
I wonder how effective an Ashiok mill plan would be. <laughs> Not effective at all. Yeah, it's possible. All right, gonna play the other Knight of Autumn instead of the Spark Double. I don't want to have just like they counter and kill my stuff, and then the Spark Double sits in my hand, or I have like my Oko in play, and then I try to Spark Double it, and they bounce it. Love to draw Vela Summer. If I go Goose next turn... Nah, let's just put it on the bottom. That was more likely they had, you know, it's like both negate and Discal, mystical dispute, like they both counter Oko, where only dispute would counter Risen Reef there, so I play around one of their counters. Well, it turns out they got them all. This is why I would have loved to draw any of our four... Veil of Summers. We've seen Quench from them. Joking. Welcome to the feast. I don't want Oko to get quenched. Why do you cross me? Down to nine minutes. That's not bad. So I think I wait a turn to play Cavalier of Dawn. And put on your true shape. We're gonna have it plus Veil of Summer. Or we're just countering this thing here. So I can make a food, play Cavalier, destroy the food, and make a 3-3. Three, three. Surely you must be famished. 
the play in the Cavalier does, you know, does get quenched. Hopefully they don't actually have quench. Okay, a disdainful stroke. I was going to say, like, you know, it does play into a counter spell, but I don't mind playing into the counter spells as much with having a card like Oko in play, because if they're tapping out for counter magic, they're not tapping out for, you know, chemistry's inside explosion, things like that that are drawing them cards. Alright, so I don't get to attack with the 3 3, doesn't have haste, but I wanted to see if they would. I think a little merriment is in order. Like if that would resolve. Looks like they have explosion. I get to draw three. Yeah, why why would they not kill the 3 3? The three damage on me can't be that valuable, because I can, you know, just sack these foods that I'm making. Right? It's like, wouldn't getting the 3 3 off the battlefield be a little bit more valuable? Probably. I oh, I guess. No? No, it doesn't play around Veil of Summer. I had a. Uh, if I had that card available. There we go. Those are some spells. Yeah, the, the Cavaliers are also elemental, so we have we have the eight elementals to trigger Risen Reef. In the deck there. Pretty sure they should have killed this 3 3 last turn. Instead of taking that 3 damage and me still having this 3 3 here. Uh, they don't have another copy for the Cavalier of Dawn. Surely you must be famished. Yep, this is Bant Midrange. Alright, they're down to five minutes. I'm still chilling at 15, so I got lots of time.
One and one. GG's. <laughs> yep, that was a long game. Um, it's just a, a long format, though, with food tokens gaining extra life. It just adds on extra turns and everything. It's just a, it's a long format. We've been averaging 30 minutes a game today. Basically, these both of these first two leagues that we played our four matches were two-hour leagues. Right now, we're at an hour and 10 minutes after these two matches for this league. So yeah, just kind of playing four matches a deck and it being an eight hour stream. Yeah, Cavalier, yeah, I understand Cavalier being a difficult card to use wild cards on. I can certainly understand that. Um, I'm, I'm never impressed by Team of Reclamation. Uh, somebody asked, like, what do I think about its spot in the metagame? It's just, it's the kind of deck that, kind of no matter what I play, it seems to just to beat... The Reclamation deck. I mean, I lose to it sometimes, of course. You know, like, lose to everything, but I don't know. I'm never really that impressed with, with the Team Reclamation. Alright, looks like my opponent... Just trying to gruel, which is not cool. Nah, gruel's pretty cool. Yeah, lots of subs today. That usually happens. You know, I had the the last two days um, without without streaming. The last two days, so we're gonna have more subs. Uh, that comes into play. Tapped. Let's do this one. More the the resubs from the last couple of days. The magic that dances around you. Gaze into my face and put on your true shape. But yeah, definitely, definitely very happy about that for sure. Yeah, artifacts have summoning sickness. Like, yeah, they do. They can still tap immediately, but they can't like attack. Like if you turn, I guess. So I guess it doesn't. It's like if you turn an artifact into a creature, it can't attack. Hmm. So I guess that would still just be saying the creatures have summoning sickness, I suppose. Hostile to the truth. I know, right? So hostile to the truth. Let's broaden your Okay, says that so nonchalantly. Hey, goat. Goat of Anubis with the sub. Thank you so much there, Goat. Our 26th of the day. The notifications aren't working for some reason today. So we're not getting any cool hype boats up on the channel. <laughs> yeah, this is the song Elks of Sidonia. That is a pretty awesome Muse song. And Beer Canthic also. You're a big fan of the Demir anti gruel deck or anti green deck. Yeah, that deck is pretty cool. I agree. Awesome. Thank you so much there. Uh, 
Well, let's do this. And we'll do this. So number 27 and the Ripper with our resub. Number 28. Thank you so much there, Ripper. are exhausting exhausting the brambles of truth twirl and curl choke your new look is enchanting let's slow this down trust me i have a plan <laughs> yep, turning the ember cleave into an elk. Elkbert cleave. That's more like it. Tyranny are lost. They just can't see it. Gaze into my face and put on your true shape. Gross. <laughs> it's just everything's haste. Ugh. Really, everything is haste. So it's a game you're interested in. May we meet again, or not? All right, see you, Oko. I guess that's all I got for you, Oko. All right, they're taking down all three. Yeah, don't don't really like where I'm at, but I got this castle at least. I suppose. Jeez.
So either want to bounce Questing Beast or Paradise Druid. Questing Beast makes them spend more mana next turn. But I don't think that would be too much of a problem. Bouncing Paradise Druid means they don't get to attack with it. There goes nothing. Of course, we've got to find something to do with, to deal with those questing beasts. Don't have anything yet. Oh, I definitely should have blocked with the one one, not the paradise druid. I kind of forgot about the Paradise Druid adding mana, and I, I forgot that I had the castle activation there, honestly. So that's that's my bad. That's kind of my bad. I only have... Two total green mana. Can't play the wolf yet. Doesn't look good. <laughs> Oko needs to be buffed, in your opinion. So, um, no, I've been streaming, Mike. I didn't see any of the, any of the decks. Um, so I think I could have played better defense with Oko and, and helped keep an Oko alive better. I think I could have. You know, having... Three Okos. I need to do a better job of keeping them alive. I'm taking out the Teferis. Um, they don't usually have as much removal, so I, I think Spark Double is still fine here. Not sure about Agent of Treachery. I mean, I guess like the, the goal of my deck is to get to the really late game like that. I kind of like Knight of Autumn. Like a four three is is perfectly fine with this combat. Yeah, like I want to play these Knight of Autumns. Just play a couple four threes. We'll just play one Agent of Treachery, and then. Uh, Hmm. 
Yeah, maybe I should just take out a land. Could probably do that. I'm going to just take out the other agent in treachery. Okay. Yeah, white, white is definitely the worst color in magic in general. It's like the color that has the hardest part of hi having an identity. Basically, when white's good... In standard, it's mostly just because of really pushed mythics um, that just have like really nice, like really good stats, but not really any kind of theme with white too much. So basically, when it's good, it's you know just cards like Arch Archangel, Archangel Avison, Gideon, um, whatever the name of that Gideon was, History of Benalia. Like they're just like pushed mythics. Not Gideon Blackblade, Gideon Ally of Zendikar. Yeah, that one, Ally of Zendikar. That time wipe's pretty rough. This could get bad mana wise. That's terrible for me. That was definitely the thing I couldn't really afford to have happen. All right, keeping time wipe. Looking like a very big mistake right now. Do we think I can top deck a land? Be able to time wipe. Yay. So we already got three green, three white, so I guess we get our second blue.
Yay. I didn't think they would have three damage instant speed for two mana. And so I can spark double the wolf, and you know it enters as a four four, and so I could just kill the you know have this. Basically, I can use spark double as just removal for questing beast right now. Or I try to WD it. We'll go with the WD. But if they kill, the way this can backfire though is if they kill WD. And then attack with Questing Beast. I kind of have to block because I don't want to go down to two. And then I have nothing to Spark Double anymore. So that's how that could have gone bad. And as you can tell, I wasn't attacking in case of a new Questing Beast. Scry. Yeah, I want that Oko. <laughs> the song's about hobbits and elks. From Elk Zeppelin. Uh, basically, nothing really happens if you elk a deputy. Wild and sovereign and free. It's basically just a three-three. Like this, this whole thing is like an ETB trigger, and so like that—that's all going to happen no matter what. I'm certain you're quite charmed to meet me. Welcome to the feast. Surely you must be famished. So could have lost there if they had like burn spell, like bone crusher giant, and then untap dragon. But now we we're gonna—I was gonna sack some of these foods and gain some life. Yeah, what's worse than one Oko? <laughs> That's like 12 abs. Yeah, I really like um, Charming Prince. You can have 75 decks in your collection. It used to be 60 on Arena. It used to be 60. They bumped it up to 75 with Eldraine coming out, but that's still not nearly enough, in my opinion. I have to delete so many decks. <laughs> yeah, the Demir anti green deck that we have, that's that's our deck to destroy Simic. Yeah, Oko turned Kedrith into an elk. Yep. That's the the Kenrith's trans transformation card. So they're on a mold of six. That's not a good card to draw. I don't mind the Wicked Wolf, you know, just kind of fitting in here, but I really don't want another Cavalier of Dawn. That was not good.
So Pell Collector is going to be a 3-3 anyway. They play Bone Crusher Giant or or anything. It's it's also a 3-3. But I I like deputizing it because if they if they kill the deputy, they just they're just getting a 1-1 back. Warheart, thanks for that resub. Yeah, welcome back. Thank you so much. Yep, power's good. So now we're yep, now we're gonna try to keep on Elkin now. Tulsimer, what a great draw. Can flicker Tulsimer even. Malif, uh, Malificorus. Maybe we'll go with that. Malificorus with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much, getting us to that 30 number. Could have died to Collision Colossus there. All right, that's another sub goal. We're gonna have to mark that down. I I obviously should have attacked first. Well done, awesome. I got that right. <clears throat> okay, so I I had I didn't mark down the other sub goal that we hit either. So of course the the sub goals they go towards a twelve hour stream. So we've hit two more since our first one. Let's let's check that out. There's there's the info panel that that has them uh, in the information. So 12 hour stream. So that means we've hit five out of 20 sub goals to, towards the next 12 hour stream. Awesome. Okay, let's see. So let's go Cavalier of Dawn. Turn the Spellbreaker into a 3-3. Because three 3-3s three are easier to deal with. And now we'll attack with this 3-3. Three three. I think we got enough stuff back on D. I could have had that 3 damage with the Tulsimer the that previous turn we'll see you know so they could be at 12 we'll see how important that ends up being i can also cavalier of dawn kill my charming prince as well to turn that into a 3-3 three, three. hmm Let's go. Let's go with these Risen Reefs. Risen Reefs are good. More lands. Do you think Elko <laughs> would be fair if it only hit your opponent's creatures or just bad? No, I mean, yeah, it's, it would still be very good if it only hit your opponent's creatures. I think it would make I think it would make a lot more sense for it to only hit your to only be able to the plus one to turn things into elks would be on your creatures.
Do we got this? The Hellkite. Not gonna do it. Gained enough life. Yay! All right, we're two and one. Got our Tulsimer Cavalier of Dawn. Those were some pretty big cards there. We got a Mastery Orb. Let's crack this pack open, see if we get something besides gems. Get a card. No gems. All right, Mastery Tree. What are we getting? We're getting Kenrith's Transformation. Just talking about that card. And then we're going to have Yorvo, Lovestruck Beast, Great Henge up next, and then definitely going red after that. With Slaying Fire, Torbran, Fervent Champion, and Ember Cleave, especially, especially those last two really good ones. And then finally, white will be the last Rome Cloak Giant will be the very last card to get. All right, one more game here with Bant Midrange. Hey, Red Maka. So. I should have reset Arena. You can see it's being slow. Thanks, Matu. Okay, we'll, we'll try this. We've got a lot of scries. Turn one, scry one. Turn two, scry two. That's just how it works. Turn three, Oko. Keep this other land, even though it's not a white source. Maybe I shouldn't keep it. Yeah, let's actually ditch, let's just ditch them both. Hmm. Island Island does make me want to play this card. Yeah. Yeah, I always can, Sir Eccles. Revel with your king. Wild. And it's not poisoned. Trust me. Hmm. So I didn't attack because of uh, the 2 1 flash creature. Is a Brian Born Cutthroat? Hmm. This is not what I want to be drawing these Cavalier of Dawns, though. When I don't have like anything mana wise. One bite. And I have not played Orzhov Life Gain in this standard. Yeah, I don't think I have in this standard. We did we did last format, the M nineteen standard. But I don't think I have since Oko. Yeah, that Grixis deck looks pretty good. There's a lot of good stuff going on there. 
I like the Angrass Rampage. Hey, what's up, Bertilux? I am back. Ah. Prono doesn't like Teferi too much. So this looks like the first deck that we played against, or I guess the second one. So I just want the, the Veil of Summers. And... I don't know about this Wicked Wolf. We've definitely not had two Risen Reefs in play ever. I don't really expect that to change this game, even though we got two in our hand. I assume my opponent's going to have interaction for them. Like, the Teferis have to get countered, and hopefully that uses up all their counter magic, and then the, Riven, the Risen Reefs at least resolve, because when the Risen Reefs resolve, we draw a card. But I guess, technically... Let's do one Reef here. Hey, Sir Eccles. Thanks for the tier one sub. Thank you so much. Our 31st sub of the day. Yay! And thank you to Sir Eccles' wife for approving the expenditure. Now you get all the emotes and everything, too. Alright, let's see. You got this Cavalier of Dawn. Making elks the old fashioned way. Alright, so he took something over Gadwick. So the real question is Teferi, then Risen Reef, or Risen Reef, then, then Teferi? Which order are we going in here for playing the two spells? Go to fairy first. And I want to be able to play pay for mystical dispute. I 
I'm known for my excellent timing. All right, if ever, everyone's bouncing stuff, no, it's a cool thing to I do. Not making this up as I go. It's more than an elking. Just everything's elks these days. All right, well, I definitely want to play Cavalier of Dawn got it. while I have Risen Reef in play. I guess I just turn Gadwick into a 3-3. No, Gadwick already is a 3-3. I don't know. I, don't, I guess... Maybe I should have just Agent of treachery But, like, Agent of Treachery is not so great, like, with Brazen Borrower, of course. But they can just go Brazen Borrower, bounce Cavalier, then attack Teferi, and then I got a chump with Risen Reef to keep Teferi around. Maybe I should have just Wicked Wolved. Thanks, Kaz. This is hardly my worst defeat. I'm just gonna let the fairy die. Cracklin' Drake. So yeah, we'll have to turn the Crackling Drake into a 3-3. What I feel about standard MTG currently, it's it's fine. It's a very slow format. Um, you know, real long games and everything. The uh, a lot of just kind of built-in card advantage and defense and and all the cards, just in the format in general. All right, we've we've ran into a land pocket, unfortunately. I 
I should probably just cut Agent of Treachery, honestly, because of Brazen Borrower. I should probably just take this card out of my deck. I'm going to move on to game number three. Just kind of a weird matchup. Like, I just don't, I don't really want any of these cards. My cards do, don't, they just don't line up very well against what my opponent's doing. Honestly. Wicked Wolf, I guess. But, like, with Brazen Borrower... Like, Brazen Borrower is pretty good. Tulsimer? I don't know. My, I mean, maybe I just go, like, the Ashiok plan. Instead of playing these Agent of Treacheries, I'll just play all of these. Doesn't seem like a very good plan against like all these flash threats and instant speed damage and stuff. I don't think that's a very good plan. Yeah, maybe I just play a couple four threes. With just like some pressure and stuff. Now I'll just play these. And we're gonna cut a land. Alright, we're just gonna play the Paradise Druids. Didn't really see Flame Sweep from them. We're going to play Wicked Wolf and Paradise Druid to cut a land. Um, the f I don't know what the Full Art lands, honestly. It's just whatever's in the store. Whenever, whenever something's in the store... And you purchase it, then you, you can't, it just goes away. So I can't tell if it's still in the store or not. That's a bummer. Hey, RC. That's been... Uh, uh, that's something that's been happening in this league to us a whole lot. Basically, I'm not too worried about getting more mana. 
we have shown that we can draw lands pretty easily. So I'm just getting rid of all these things that are mana. I'm just putting them down to the bottom. We do have four Veil of Summers in our deck right now. That's something that I really want to see. But I guess we're not going to get... Oh, I, I do not. Thumb, Thumbscrews is a card. Actually, that's one I, I did not. I don't think I ever knew Thumbscrews. Yeah, like the rack. I knew that card very well. So two mana artifact. The beginning of your upkeep if you have five or more cards in hand. Thumbscrews does one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. I don't think I've known that card. So we can pay for Mystical Dispute now. They had to have, like, basically just Negate to counter this. Quench, Dispute, aren't going to do it. Responsibility. Let's try this. All right, so planning on going Cavalier, destroying a food, make an additional 3-3. Three, three. That's the plan. time. All right, we got Veil of Summer. They got six cards over there, though. I guess that's going to be pretty problematic, this Gadwick. Tapping stuff. I 
That wasn't a, a very good use of Veil of Summer, honestly. What is the use we needed? Yeah, DJ Hotness, if Fire Near would come to Arena, I would definitely stream it, but I don't I don't believe it will. Unfortunately. That's pretty great. So I'm going to give him Gadwick back. I've done the hero thing before. No, I, I don't do an, any MTGO anymore. I like Arena a lot more. So now I just, I sold my MTGO collection and everything and play Arena. Hmm. So I was planning on on saving that for, uh, for like saving to fairy, because like they they attack it, you know, like they tap like my my blockers, they attack all this damage at to fairy, and then I was gonna be able to just flicker to fairy. That was my plan, but no more games. Honestly, like this still taps them out, and this is just too much value of me getting risen reef back, getting the extra card off risen reef. Them not getting the extra card off Rouse Outburst, and then plus now Risen Reef triggering my Cavalier, um, and everything too. It's just, it's just too much.
I thought that was Veil of Summer. I got really excited there. Yeah, it's a fairy time twister targeting to fairy is a flavor win, that's true. Yeah, white, that would kind of make sense if White Cavalier exiled. White usually has exile effects. That makes sense. Yeah, hopefully this is game. I think my best plan here is create a food token there. Play Wicked Wolf here. They, they could have like another Brazen Borrower that could bounce the wolf. <clears throat> if I try fighting too much. I could just fight the 3-3 three, three, and then I don't have to... That's fine. So then I don't have to sacrifice anything. Alright, so they have to chump block both Cavaliers to stay alive. Alright, we got there. Rank up. Platinum tier 2. Alright, so yeah. So we went 3-1. Can't really... Can't complain too much about going 3-1. and one. Our deck felt a little off, though. It felt like we didn't have enough card advantage. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Our deck felt a little off. Uh, Risen Reef, Teferi, Oko, they were good, but kind of felt like the 26 lands was a little bit too much. The Paradise Druids weren't really, uh, like, obviously we're trying to go one, one to three all the time here. Like, maybe, like, Paradise Druids should be, um, once, like, maybe we cut a land, or maybe even cut two lands, Probably just one land. Cut like one land to cut the Paradise Druids and play three once upon a time. Maybe. Yeah, the the white wasn't yeah, it wasn't too bad, but because you know we have the the goose, the paradise druid that also helps fix it. And I was kind of relying on Risen Reef also to help fix mana. You know, like Risen Reef getting extra cards and stuff. It's a thing, there's so many cards that you could play. Yeah, Nissa, Krasis. Play all those. Grazer works great with Oko. Oko does make a Boreal Grazer more valuable. Um, but games you don't have Oko, and games you just kind of draw a Boreal Grazer later on, it's not very good. But, um, yeah, there's, there's just a lot of cards that, you know, Bant, Colors, there's so many cards you could fit in here. And that's the hard part, is cutting it down to 60, honestly. Well, I guess it says 59 right now, but it should be 60. I don't know why it says 59. Oh, there's a Cavalier missing. Uh, 
there we go. It's hard. It's hard to fit. You know, it's hard to uh, fit everything into sixty. Because yeah, we're we're trying to do flicker effect things. You know, bounce bounce our own stuff, bounce their stuff. I just think Cavalier of Dawn is is really underrated. We didn't get to do anything like super spicy. This you know, like basically like destroying planeswalkers and turning them into three threes is a really big game. We didn't get to really do that. Um, but even like just destroying our food, making three threes. Three threes just aren't too valuable right now in the world of Oko. Um, you know, Teferi can bounce the three threes and everything like that. And so I wanted to kind of show off Cavalier of Dawn. But still went three and one. So that went pretty well there. Um, Ashiox in the sideboard. I'm not, not, you know, maybe we don't need all those. Maybe like those could be counter spells. Honestly, like maybe we just had like a, you know, think if we had like a couple Dovin's vetoes. Um, you know, like, you know, two Dovin's Vetoes, two Disdainful Strokes, or, you know, something like that, like a couple Mystical Disputes, a couple Dovin's Vetoes. Those those would probably be more impactful than the Ashiox, honestly. Yeah, those would probably be better. <laughs> yep, give Oko a taste of his own medicine. <clears throat> yeah, it was it was basically for, like, dance, because, like, there's a... There's a um, there's like a little bit of time there where Dance with the Mance was starting to get like really popular again. And that was a matchup I was worried about. And then just like other kind of um, other control decks. I don't really love. I don't know if I love Mystical Dispute. I should probably play a couple. So yeah, maybe like a just two veto to, to dispute. Also could go with a uh, disdainful stroke there. I should be doing that instead. I think that would help out. All right. Um, that's Bant Midrange, though. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Also leave some comments, <clears throat> especially with Cavalier of Dawn. What do you think is a good Cavalier of Dawn shell? Um, and then like how... How would you fit in if you would want to play like Nissa Crisis, that kind of stuff? Well, you know, how would you kind of change the deck up? I definitely really like Charming Prince. Like this card's also just awesome. Like the scry and the flickering. This card was awesome. Got a lot of scrying done there. All right. Um, yeah, that's that's all I got here for Bant Midrange, though. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.